Swift lets us create classes by basing them on existing classes in a process known as inheritance. This new class gets all the properties and methods from the other class, called the parent or superclass. And the new class, the child class or the subclass, can then add customizations or change functionality or make improvements to customize the way the new class wants to behave. When you want to inherit one class from another, you write the class name, colon, the parent class name. To show this off, here is a class called employee. This has one constant property, an hours integer, plus an initializer to set that value. We can now make two classes that inherit from employee. Here's one, developer inherits from employee, and also manager inherits from employee. Now both these things have colon employee right there in the definition. They both inherit from employee, which is why they can both use the hours property inside the work method. That is if they're defined on themselves locally, when actually really it comes from the employee parent class. This of course avoids repetition. Now, in this case, they're both adding this work method, some extra functionality to do what they want to do. And if we create developer and create manager and call work on both those things, Swift will call the right version of work automatically. So we could say in Xcode something like this, let Robert equals a developer with hours eight and let Joseph equals a manager with hours 10. Then Robert.work and Joseph.work. Brilliant. Now, as well as sharing properties, you can also share methods, which can then be called from the child classes. As an example, we could say up here in employee, there's a new method called print summary, which is going to say print uh, I work hours a day, hours a day, like that. Boom. Now, because developer inherits from employee, we can immediately start calling print summary from our developer. It says something like this, let Naval equals a developer hours eight, Naval dot print summary. And there we are. Now things get a little more complicated when you want to change a method you inherited. For example, we could just put print summary here right into employee, which is great. But maybe one of those child classes wants a custom summary being printed, just slightly different behavior. This is where Swift enforces a simple rule. If a child class like developer or manager wants to change a method it got from its parent, for example, print summary, we must use the override keyword in the child classes version. Now this does two things. First, if you attempt to change a method without using override, Swift will refuse to build your code. This stops you from accidentally overriding a method. Second, if you use override on a method, but your method doesn't actually override anything from the parent class, Swift will refuse to build your code because you probably made a mistake, a typo, for example. And so if we wanted developers to have a unique print summary method, we'd do something like this. Override func print summary, print custom text. Uh, I'm a developer who will sometimes work, developer even, work hours, hours a day, but other times will spend hours arguing about whether code should be indented using tabs or spaces. True that, yo. Now, Swift is really smart about how overrides work. Uh, if your parent class has a work method, it returns nothing. But your child class has a work method that returns uh, a boolean, if it worked or not, plus maybe a string to designate where the work's being done. That does not require an override method. There are two different methods. You, you aren't replacing the parent's method 
One has no parameters, no return value. One has a return value and a parameter. And so they're different. You don't need the override keyword there. Uh, one last thing, if you know for sure your class should not support inheritance, you could mark it as final. You could say final class manager and final class developer like that. And this means that the class itself can inherit from other things, but nothing can inherit from it. No child class can use a final class as a parent. Uh, I'm personally a big fan of using final classes until I know I want to make it an open inheritable class. I can't flip things around, final by default, and open up when I'm ready, as opposed to saying, hey, it's here to subclass, and then try and change my mind. Oops, no, make that final when folks are already trying to use it. So I make things kind of final by default.